everyone. So I am Demera Virgil, and I am your host for Queendom Conversations podcast. Today, I have with me Amanda Pedway, and she is going to be talking about the power of finding your voice. I'm so excited to have her today, and I'm going to let her do a little introduction and tell you about herself. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm so excited to have you here today. Look, just learning the, the little bit that I know about you, because I felt like we talked forever, and it was supposed to be a five-minute call. And yeah. Ready to spill the tea on your story and your age. I was going to know how old. I'm like, y'all not even going to ever guess it right. You lose money on this queen. So it is truly a joy and pleasure to have met you. And Thank you. I'm here. I don't know how to lie. It's my only thing. <laughs> Thank you. Right. And be like, I can't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> you are okay. yeah. Amanda Raquel. My last uh, name is my married name, Petaway. On stage, I'm Amanda Raquel. And geez, a loving wife. I absolutely adore my husband. He, I got a good one. I got the eighty percent right. Okay. right on, on Tinder. I ain't going. I ain't got what it takes to even survive these streets. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have three children: one, seven, two here. Don't them, so I homeschool them. And in between being a full-time wife, full-time mother, I also run a, a couple of companies. And the one that is my heart is I'm a singer and I'm a songwriter. And so I help singers and songwriters, specifically independent singers and songwriters, uh, overcome limiting beliefs so that they can create the music business of their dreams the way they want to do music. It's awesome. Amen to that. Amen. And so can you tell us a little bit of how you started this journey? Girl, kicking and screaming. That's how we started. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we started this is after the degrees didn't work this is after the fourth company melted in the recession 08 i was in an investment firm downtown here in chicago and now i want to ask god what should what you want me to do he like oh, mm -hmm. oh i got your attention hi man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he clear as day said go into music and that is the one of the areas that i never wanted to enter because i have people i love who i saw were mistreated both in the industry outside the industry through some church platforms all churches aren't like that obviously but i was just like oh no and they were always poor every time i saw them the only people making money was the people outside of the singers oh and, wow oh i don't want to be a starving artist i don't want to be a struggling anything no and oh my ideology and my idols, quite frankly, of, of money being security and all that was definitely keeping me from that, as well as keeping me from even asking God what he But is why it became my fifth company, my current company, because I finally was ready to do what he asked me to do. Oh, wow. When you say that money was the root and just not wanting to struggle and just wanted some more security as far as things you were working on. How did you come to terms with that when God told you to move into a different direction? How did you process that? Good question. Well, it's a few things. One, it wasn't working. Like I was working with really impressive people. And when the recession hit, they were literally jumping out of the window. Like I was in finance. So people were like suicidal. And I just saw so much carnage, divorce and strokes and just like literally in real time. So I said, okay, so this is actually going to be my future because I need this too much. The other aspect was I asked God what he wanted. He told me, I was like, Gideon, you got to give me a sign and give me a fleece. Are you sure? It can't be me. The deal was, if you want me to do this, how am I pay for it? I'm broke, broke at this time. Liabilities going on because there was just so much deceit happening in the financial market, none of which that we were a part of, but we had partners who were not genuine. And so we, it was coming out and we were like, oh my goodness. And now I'm we're just trying to survive. My husband and I, he's at Moody, I think at the time, Moody Bible College. And we're looking at each other as adults. Because at this time, I don't know, I'm late 20s, getting ready to be 30s. And we're supposed to be breaking some ground, feeling established. And we're like, what are we going to do now? Oh, wow. And so it was like you were starting over. <laughs> over. There's no savings. There's no nothing. And so I'm looking at the Lord, like, how am I going to, studios require money, like marketing requires, but how are we going to do this? And the deal was, if you want me in the studio, you get me in for free. Like, how is that going to work? And sure enough, I was singing, just having fun out. And someone was like, I love your voice. You, I've never heard your voice. It's just the most amazing thing. If you ever want 10 hours free in my studio, I, you please, I just want people to know that you recorded in my studio. And I burst into tears. I was like, no! <laughs> that was your sign. That's why you have to be careful about the things that you ask God for. 
because he will give it to you. Oh, wow. So can we talk about your background on singing? Did you sing as a young child in the church or? All of us was in the church singing. Oh, wow. And so it's like a family. So your whole family can sing? No. So okay. Don't air that part. They'll be like, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> But some of them don't know they can't. But mainly my father, he is the singer of the family. And the Black church for us, which I'm grateful, a lot of my history and learning about the Lord through the Black church, there's definitely some relearning that we had to do, hence why I was not rendering my gift to God in the way that he asked. But one thing you had to do was you knew that you were going to serve. And usher board, choir, pick something, you serve mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You want to participate, yeah. We're sitting there consuming and looking at your phone and acting like you hear, like you annoyed, like you hear waiting for God to do something for you. So I didn't have that. I, I knew that it had to happen. And so my father was in the choir. I love my dad. I wanted to be in the choir. I knew I could sing backgrounds, which is how most singers start. I just want to do background. I don't want to. And I'm like, mm -hmm. nobody wants to shine until it's time to shine. They really actually feel it's really interesting to hear the psychology of that. But nevertheless, that was the start. And I got a few leads and it was always fun, but it was never something that I considered to do as living. I started opera in high school. Oh, wow. Opera. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And opera for about four years. And I, I did it because I, again, love singing. And I was fascinated that the discipline of singing started to come opera. So you're learning different languages and you're learning how to actually place notes and how to support them without worrying about cracking. Because that's one thing I did recognize in church. By 4 p.m., a lot of folks anointing wore off and they couldn't sing them. Up. They couldn't sing. So can you explain the difference between like gospel singing and a church to sing in opera? Yeah. What are the different? Is there a difference in the way you hold your breath or the way that you hold notes? Or if you have a gift in singing, then it's not really difficult. You can copy any pattern. Oh, you asking deep questions. Yeah, okay. yeah, because I just feel like when you sing, you just open your mouth and sing. Like I never thought about training or coaching or different styles. I just feel like whatever gift you have when you sing, whether it's soprano or alto, and then you just automatically just go into that focus. And so that's just all you do. Until yeah. you said you did opera and then you sung in the church. I just never thought about it being different. Yeah, this is a very great question. Your voice is your voice, but most people don't know their voice. Most people are copying. They're trying to be. Mm -hmm. So mine was Whitney Houston. I was definitely CC Winans. At, and when I started leaning into opera, because I've always had a clean sound. So I never had that Tamala man or Mahalia. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah. So people yeah. take that kind of sound with gospel. However, I have a very clean sound, like more of a CC Wines, like I said, or a Natalie Grant. And that ruined my identity for a while because I thought mm -hmm. all real singers only sound like black singers. They sound like that. So that's mm -hmm. why I was like, no, I'm not going to be well received. I don't want. Then when I went into opera, I started to see how, well, they make a lot of great money and that there was a whole range of ignorance that I just didn't have. I didn't have any understanding of the competency on how do you actually sing. And once you learn how to do something, you get more confident. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I know how to do this. But I got bored because they're very, it's rigid. It doesn't have as much heart. There's more freedom in gospel. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely more mm -hmm. structure in opera. So after some scholarships in college, I went on and started doing jazz and, and touring mm -hmm. with some celebrity artists or um, touring in, in, in my own music and with missions and then doing backgrounds and studio work with celebrity artists. And I started to find all kinds of ways I could think, right? Um, myself actually by unplugging from the church environment to an extent, uh, hear music the way that felt good to me. And that's a real thing. How does it feel so I can actually hear how it sounds? Mm -hmm. Or you have resonance in your voice. And so some people, they feel awkward when they're black and they're drawn to country or, or rock. Mm -hmm. White people, we get upset when we like, why she got so much soul? She mm -hmm. ain't that much soul. God's wow. white people, y'all don't understand. Wow. I mean, so, so let me ask you this. When you have an artist or if you have a young lady and she's copying other singing styles, do you feel like that places a, a limitation on her? Absolutely. Eventually? Absolutely. So okay. I mean, this is the God that I serve. I don't know who everybody, but the Bible, the one I'm looking at actually likes us. Like he loves us. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why they have been like misaligning that in the conversation, 
the entire story of what God has done for us is because he actually likes us and he's very intentional. Even when he's doing nothing, very intentional. Like the whole, even very intentional. Like it was all prophesied. He's like, I'm doing everything intentionally. So when he makes your voice, he did it intentionally. I agree 100%. And then all of what comes with that life that you use with that voice, people are talking about it now, manifesting frequencies. Mm -hmm. What is happening is you're literally calling this your life mm -hmm. as, as a vocalist. What resonates with your real voice? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? So you can make a whole fake life up with a whole fake voice and you'll be unhappy. You'll have oh, people, wow. you'll have a bunch of flatterers. You'll usually be drugged up. You'll be sleeping with your producer because you have no intimacy and, and balance in your life right because oh wow a, a fake is not you oh wow but the gift is still without repentance it'll still be powerful it'll still be beautiful it'll still be influential it'll just make you miserable and because god likes you he doesn't want that he loves you he actually wants you to be the fish you are the tree you are but it takes a number you have to do a number of yourself it takes a, a, a an enormous is the word for, amount of intentional um work on yourself to allow yourself to be yourself <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this you said that there is a psychology oh, when yeah. it comes to a person who only wants to sing in the background and then they don't want to come to the forefront oh yeah and i had no idea i just thought this is me so you're teaching me so much whenever i saw background singers yeah i would just think that they're probably just starting out and so that's why they're in the background yeah. I mean, you would see them at concerts, like in the background singer for like different major people. But I was just thinking it's just because they're just starting. I never thought that it's because there's their mindset that they're only they only feel safe just being in the background. They don't want to shine. This is what they say they want to. Yes. Yes. You said it perfectly, but it's not a blanket statement. There are some people who are the dopest back like you will pay the millions to be the background they bring oh, wow. depth of texture to the song they know how to hold notes better they can do harmonies better than anybody else like they actually excel at doing background vocals mm -hmm. and so they literally shine in that in the background. and oh, they wow. do when you have your whoever you're the people who are touring when they pick their backgrounds you, honey they are irreplaceable and you're looking for people who are better than the rest in that space right oh wow people like you said who have not been seasoned trained and are at a level a caliber where they're intentionally choosing to be background vocalists mm -hmm. no and they're not they're being paid because we're like girl the way you can balance and blend and blah 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 they, we're not talking about that we're talking about the group of the majority of people who like you said in the 80 percent 90 percent who start off and they're like, if I'm going to even tip my toe in the water, let me stay in the back. Oh, wow. And yeah, that's the majority of all of us, right? Very few of us pass second grade. I mean, you have to be radical, preserved to be able to maintain a level of confidence where you actually feel safe in front of everybody. Oh, wow. So there are some young ladies, some women who will watch this and they may be able to sing, but they have been comfortable in the background. So what are some things you would suggest so that um, they can shine? Because I've never thought about this, but to shine in the background, that is a powerful statement. Yes. Yeah. What are some things you would say to these women to give them the courage to just shine and be up front and then be be visible so that the world can see them without feeling like they don't belong there? That's a great question. There's always going to be a tension. You're going to be miserable first. You're, you, mm. you will always be miserable first. So you don't have to wonder if we think you're lying. You're lying. Oh, wow. <laughs> you don't like it. So right. shining in the background is when I am literally my biggest self and I actually belong here. So you don't even let anybody push you to the front. You're like, that's not where I belong. Oh, wow. But wife, it's, hold on. That's not the role. People who recognize their power just don't let you move them out of their position. This is not the position I'm supposed to be in. The mm -hmm. same is true when you know, I wish I could have auditioned or I wonder if I, if you have any inkling, any type of desire to start wanting to be in the forefront, you're done. You're just going to be tormented. You might as well start moving in that direction. Oh, because wow. you, you know you've lost grace for the background. That is not interesting anymore. That you wish that you could feel more validated in the bigness of who you are. And look, the devil is really tricky as well as neuroscience, as well as our environment, whether it's parenting, whether it's bad legalism, like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Either 
either negative forces are trying to move us into a space where we're prideful and we think we're better than everyone else, or it swings us to the opposite extreme of pride, which is, I'm not that good, don't worry, no, all, oh, wow. false humility. So either you're super, super arrogant, or you are imbalanced in the value and the wonder and the fearfully and wonderfully made aspect of who you are. There is a middle ground. And so either way it goes, is keeping you from standing 10 toes down and the few things you're good at. Like, cause you don't want to see me bake. It's right. Like, you ain't got to get arrogant. You don't want right. to see mechanics. What do I do? And okay. God is very clear about asking people, even through the New Testament, to um, walk the truth, not their truth. Walk in the truth of who they are so that they bring him glory and they attract people. If you're not attracting people, just like he did, like influence is a part of this. Singing is, wow. is very visible. If you are not attracting people in your sphere, you don't get to go comparing saying, I should have 10,000 more people. No, just attract oh, your tribe. Right. If you right. are not attracting your tribe by using your voice, then all, there's a couple things that's going to happen. One, you do give an account for that. But two, I have been, and we're in ministry, and not a lot of people are in ministry. I have never at the end of, of anyone's life heard anyone say anything other than, I wish I'd done better with the people. They're not asking for money. They're not asking for, like, they're just saying, I wish I had done better with the people who I did love. I should have shown it. I should have been more expressive. I should have not held back. They either say that or they say, I wish I hadn't wasted time. That's it. Wow. Everybody on the dead bed. Wow. So let me ask you this. Now, as you're talking, I'm, I'm writing things down. Do you think singing is a ministry within itself? Don't play with me. No, because some people don't know. Some people don't really. You have some people who don't even listen to gospel music. I'm tripping on that. And when I speak on it for a while, when I was doing gospel, then I switched and switched over to CCM. And there was a whole like, <gasps> because it was okay. what is CCM? CCM is contemporary Christian music. It's called basically what people think is white music. It's hill song. And it's, uh, it's yeah, been, but I like hill song. I know, right? And then when yeah. we emerging and they took out less choirs and there was more praise teams and we started singing more like what we thought was them and they started singing more like us. There was a huge like uproar and tension and like this authority. It's like when people don't let black folk in country music. It's hold on, you don't own the genre. So when God creates music, just like anything else, it's going that everyone's gonna have a new sound themselves. You're gonna create a new kind of twang or version to what was influencing you. And right. that's because he just, he just wants more of all of it. I don't care if you're in hip hop. I don't. It doesn't matter to God. He likes all of it. He likes all, all exactly. music because he's giving all of us different gifts. All of us new and different. Like even every seed within itself is making another apple. He's everything's on autopilot. He's just give me more of what you actually are, and that will not only please you, but it will draw again the people who like that sound. Is it a ministry? Yes. The fastest way, scientifically proven, you want to influence someone deeply to the core is you add music to the, the message. Period. Like if you want to get to them quickly, and you want to get to them on a cellular level. Want to learn an alphabet? Don't say it. Sing it. Sing it. And the same thing is happening um, through the radio waves now. You can consider that a ministry as a dark ministry, but nevertheless, you are. You can be calm and get angry with the right song. Come on, you could be literally That's true. Like the blues, when you blues. listen to the blues, especially down here in the south, it can make you depressed because the very waking up and heartache and death. Yeah, yeah. So it does affect mood. Yeah. You put on one, I, like I said, we homeschool. I put on a certain type of sound, the kids immediately get smarter, more attentive, more focused. Mm -hmm. If I were to put on a different sound, it literally gets distracted. There's mm -hmm. tempo, there's beat, there's megahertz. There's so much that goes into that. Mm -hmm. And it ministers, I'll say that, to the aspects of you that are your natural bend. Yes? Yeah. So if you like being angry, you're going to, y'all know, we're going to listen to 360 Mafia. You're going to listen to yeah those type of songs because that's the energy that it's giving you and that's why i always tell women when i have conversations that you have to be intentional about the things that you fill your spirit with like you pray and you fast and you're doing all these positive things but then when you get home then you're watching these reality shows on. fighting and negativity and then the music and then the movies like i don't watch horror movies i don't watch scary yeah. movies i listen to songs that um, have curse words and then they degrade women like I don't feel my spirit with those things but you have to be very intentional about the things that you feel your spirit with because everything counts there's no such thing as something small 
everything you do counts everything you do matters yeah um, so let me ask you this this is so interesting to me because i love music but i've never really talked to anyone who was actually a singer this is my first time let's say that you've been doing gospel gospel is your passion and when you sing there's a connection there because the words you're singing you actually feel it and so there's a connection with the people that you're singing to and then let's say that you may get somebody and then they reach out to you but it's country music or it's soft rock and then you sing those songs because i do notice sometimes that background singers sing for different artists and there's a totally different type of music so is it difficult to have that same passion when you sing for something that you don't feel as connected to versus something that you feel connected to. Because some people, they sound amazing regardless of what they sing, yeah. but you can't really tell. Is this just, they're just singing, so nothing really connects with them, so they sound the same across the board? Or is it different when you sing in different types of music? I guess that's what I'm asking. Yeah, you're right. So, again, you're asking a, a really great, like, deep question and it's not a one answer to it okay. so some everyone mm, the bible talks about so you have five talents two talents one talents everyone has a measure given to them so right. some people look they need to be in one genre and they they lock in they love it that feels good to them some people they can cross over i do we intentionally didn't come out as gospel because what i love about christ it actually leads through so many areas all of the areas of my life but it comes through my music. So I want to talk about life things and relationships and how we should actually not rush in life and just so many other topics that wouldn't fit into what we now think the gospel genre is, right? Mm -hmm. So the more free you get, the more you will feel drawn to what it is that you like. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 And sometimes it will only be one or two things and you're fine. Sometimes they'll be like, I want more, I want more, I want more. See, the fact that God knew that I was a vocalist, I didn't even know I could sing until I was 35. So I'm singing and didn't know that I was a singer. Wait a minute now. You know I'm saying? So so like, you were singing, but you just didn't see yourself as being a singer. Yeah. to be singing. Yes, it's gospel. Oh, yeah. Church, I'm singing because people are like, oh, everybody else can see my gift but me. Oh, I'm going to give you a scholarship for college. Or, oh, we love you to do that. It hasn't clicked that this is my thing. Oh, wow. Okay. Right to be poor so i'm starting companies and i'm doing other things that guys you don't even like this is not your passion you actually keep doing this thing on the side for free when you're bored or irritated with your office life oh wow as i'm learning about myself i had already done gospel then opera like i said then right. jazz. then i started writing for pop labels i'm just doing it for fun never connecting that this is the, the like my purpose right oh, but wow. I have a lot of genres under my belt i'm free i've done the work of all the spiritual, emotional, there's so many things you have to address to become a free person from your environment to your family, yeah. your food. Yeah, no, that's so true. As you're evolving and growing in God, you're becoming freer. Only you and him are going to know what he continues to draw you towards. I was just looking at a young lady who was so funny and she's so passionate about saving the whales. And I obviously, honestly, I obviously wants to keep the animals on this planet, but I don't have the level of passion that she has where she literally is going to tie herself to a tree. There are things oh, I wow. I'm just not drawn in that way to that. The to things that. that agitate us, that's holy. The things that, is, I call it a holy agitation. The things that frustrate us are the things that we're supposed to be fixing. And so when I'm sitting here listening to a, a worship team, and I'm like, why are they flat? I can't get through a service almost. I didn't even think about that. So because you sing and because you've been trained, when you go different places, you can tell when a person is not hitting no. the right note. Like me, I'm just like, oh my God, they sound amazing. <laughs> but you know the difference because you have been trying. Wow. I, had, like, I don't you care who they're that. singing now on the radio. I'm like, they are not actually singing. This is all flat. It's completely computerized. And when you hear them live, it stresses me out. So I'm sure it's like you when it comes to, I know you have candles. You can see the quality of it. You can see, you'll be like, this is cheap. This yes. is the wrong essential oil. You could quickly pick up because yes. your hands are yes. high because it's the area you're agitated in that you feel somebody should do something. I gotta fix this. Yeah, I never thought about that had candles and t-shirts you kept growing because what you were as you grow you become more attracted to the next thing that's true that is very people, true. some people are really good at candles some people are really good at gospel and they don't want anything else and they are content it's both okay um okay so let me ask you this actually i have a few questions so you talked about in the beginning you didn't really want to pursue singing because of all the things that go with it, like 
negative things, people being taken advantage of, people not having money, people having the wrong legal teams and people, we always hear stories about the back end of it and the things that go on. And like a lot of women, once they become popular, it's, yeah, but they had to literally sell their soul to get to this point. So for, there are some ladies who are probably in the midst of this now, struggling with trying to be at a place where they are doing things right and in order and decent so that they can be proud of their accomplishments and yeah walk in their anointing. So what are some things you did to prevent you from going through that avenue? What are some things you did? Oh, you don't want to take my route because my route, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest. And it's typically the route that most singers do take, which is just a very lonely route. It's slow. It's arduous. It's exhausting. Mm-hmm. It's isolating. And if you're not built like me, like I'm built a fighter. Okay. And so a lot of people, like for instance, like you're a business owner as well, right? Right. You have to, there's, there are several temperaments. It's about four temperaments. No matter what you do, if you do a corporate test, a spiritual test, it's usually going to land up in about four categories. All of us are also built a certain way in how we show up. So I don't know how, I don't know how to quit. I don't know how to lose. I don't know how to do it. So I became an entrepreneur because I, once I see it as the way to win, it's uh-huh. what I only stick to. That makes sense? Yes. There yeah. are a lot of people who are peacemakers or a lot of people who can flow differently. So I, I wouldn't suggest my route because they'd be looking at me like, girl, I ain't got that kind of uh, energy and right. Right? right to keep looking at people who close doors in your face because your age, because of your morals, because of your values, because you won't leave your family, because you won't let them over sexualize you because you don't want to be a Miller Girl, one of the producers said, let's just make you the next Miller Rue. You don't I'm like, why would I want to be a Miller I want to be me. So right. if you don't have that kind of nature, like I have. And I've learned to love this nature. This is the same nature that people would call either masculine or too assertive or too direct. That's a female. I've had to, yeah, let God clean and wash me in. No, girl, I have you this way because you actually, I'm a leader and create communities for people who may not have my temperament. And that is the fastest way to learn. The fastest way to learn is actually in an environment that supports the you <laughs> that you were trying to be, right? That's why you create mm-hmm. this podcast. As soon as you put sure. this here, you now are no longer alone and you're confirmed, you're reaffirmed, like faith comes by hearing, right? right. Uh, actually true as you're developing the muscle to become more courageous. And so that's what I would recommend is why we started the coaching program. It's why we, we it's why I heal as fast as I do. I usually notice, oh, I'm around somebody who I can see is my next me. Or even if it's not a big group, I can see it in a book. I can figure it out with the Holy Spirit and I feel like I'm not alone. That makes right. sense. Okay. So let's talk about your coaching company. It's called Brave Voice Academy. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. So we've, I've been coaching now for over 10 years and that also came through God just saying, say yes. Someone came up to me, I was pregnant and I was like, Lord, I'm not coming downtown to this farm anymore. This is just, this is not it. How do I raise this kid? You know how it is. They can, child care is crazy. Yes. I'm going to get a job and pay for somebody to watch my kid. You got to make a lot of money. Very expensive, very expensive, especially when they're little. Yeah. We really had to make some choices as to how we we're going to do life. And at that season, I was just like, I want peace. I want harmony. We're living on my husband's income. I'll do a little something from the side. Like I knew God was calling me to do that and start this company, but I didn't know how. And I was done touring Michael Jackson. He said it's so funny, but it is hell. It's really exhausting. You're never home. Your time zones are changing. You really need to see where you're at because you're not in control of the actual schedule. You know what I'm saying? It was not the glamour that it looks like. And I didn't want that. So I said, I want to stay in in music, but I don't know how I'm supposed to do this, Lord. And uh, a young lady came up to me and was like, I heard you singing at somewhere. Could you teach me how? And I was like, what? Wow. And God's like, say yes. And I'm like, what? I'm literally looking. We're talking. And I go, what? (laughs) <laughs> he's like, okay. he like, say yes. I'm like, yeah. She said, really? Okay, how much? And he's like, tell her the last, what you paid for your last coach. And so I say the amount. And she's like, okay, great. When can I start? And it was the easiest sale I'd ever oh, made. Wow. Oh, wow. Start. So I told her and all of them came that way. Like I just started now that my kids have their 10 and their seven and we have some room and they're never they're not here. So they're never having to be under me. I don't have to feed them all the right away with me. Right. Um, we just started marketing. It's always been, I heard about you. Can you coach me? Same way. Yeah. That's the same way with me. 99.9% of the things that I create or sell 
is because someone mentioned me. It's not, I've never done an ad. I don't oh. do marketing. No, no, it's just word of mouth. And I'm so word grateful for that. So I understand. Yes. Yeah. And that's why God's way is always better. Like when he says, I give success. It is. I give I good success. Like this can be easy. That took forever to learn in music and life and marriage, whatever. Amanda, it doesn't have to be hard. And that's why it was so hard for me to even understand that music can be beautiful and monetizing, marketing your music can feel easy. It doesn't have to be hard. And mm -hmm. and so that's how the coaching started. And then for, I don't know, 10 years, I've been, I, the actual coaching started 10 years ago. But this is after I had built praise teams, been on praise teams, tour. Like I had done all the things and I was always talking to people about how to become brave and fearless anyway. Mm -hmm. So you know how it is when you're a teacher, you run in Sunday school, you're the person they ask to lead a vacation Bible school when you're six. Okay. You teach the right. whole, like it's your gift. Right. And you know that you're doing it anyway. I had been coaching for free for decades. Oh, you wow. Know. And then you didn't even realize that you were just having conversations, but it was actually coaching. So that was you in your learning stages and you didn't know. I had no idea. How are you holding that long? Opera taught me that in high school. How are you? Mm -hmm. how Great no to all that vibrato. I done gospel before. Like I got you know what I'm saying. So now I'm just telling them, oh, do this and do that. And it became an actual business when I just wasn't trying to go downtown anymore and be in traffic and wanted to raise my children. Right. But now, but after being with hundreds of singers and being, we we getting delivered. Like we on this couch, we got people who are they don't sing because they've been raped. We people who don't sing because their their mother or their brother or their father said that they're ugly or they would never be anything. You know what I'm saying? We have I have oh, like, wow. Singers. Okay, so let's just talk about that for a minute. So when you say they won't sing because past traumas, is it because they feel like just from conversations, is it because they feel like it will bring attention to them? Or do they feel like they're not worthy of the gift to sing? Girl, all that. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, wow. You know what you have to be to feel comfortable being visible? I am supposed to be viewed. You are here to view me. You oh, came to the show because you want me to give you a good time. You came to the show because you enjoy me. Wow. You oh, yourself wow. To enjoy. Most people only feel they can be enjoyed, but perverted. They're drugged up. They're saying naughty things themselves. And in that context, now they can provide pleasure. We don't have a clean pure version a uh, uh, perspective of what pleasure can be and god is all about pleasure it's just in boundaries so that we're safe so yes i've had young ladies who didn't speak and their mom or aunt was like i know she sings you know silently i can hear her in the bathroom oh, Maybe help wow. her like bring her here bring her right here and sure enough these people are now singing and doing all kind of speaking and college opening up and blooming so when we talk about trauma like you talked about like you, spoke, like you brought up right. that's Trauma is any time you feel that you don't have control. You feel helpless. You couldn't fix it. And so there's small trauma. I have, the devil is just evil. So sin is everywhere. I don't know why we won't deal with that aspect of it. But right. there are beautiful, help, lovely families that right. the child still has trauma. I felt like I had to be perfect because I had it like, what? That is still yeah. Yeah. my great parents' expectation. It's still trauma. Yeah. The point is that whenever you feel like you have no control and you're helpless, all the way to people who have been tormented and people who have been fully abused. Like it's clear abuse, right? Yeah. Um, we'd have to then go through dimensions. You're not one-sided, you're multifaceted. We're in onions, right? So whenever right. says I'm about to lose the weight, you get tired, you gain the weight. Yeah. Why yeah. are yes, there's food issues because it's just unhealthy, but why do you go to that food? That's right. ass, that's family, that's familiar connections, that's emotional. There's so much stuff there that emotional trauma. If you don't deal with why am I, how did I get in the trauma, which is yeah. coming aware of it, that yeah. might come therapy, that might come through a Holy Ghost moment at the altar. We got to figure out how we got here. And then what's the best path for you to develop long healing? We're not talking about quick healing. We're talking about I'm done with it. We're talking about whether, and so when I am dealing with or working with a singer and she said, okay, can you show me how to hit the high note? I'm like, yes, absolutely. Some fear is competency. I just don't know how to do it. I'm nervous because I feel insecure about how to do it. Great. That's fine. We'll deal with it. The second piece is going to be confidence. It's not competence. It's confidence. And so now I have singers who I'm like, girl, you can sing and you just refuse. That's me. You just don't know you can sing. Mm. You can already sing. Oh, wow. So what is the...
So neural transmitters. We got to go through brain waves. We got to go through retransmitting your wire wave. We got to go through you forgiving your past. We got to go through like it's oh, yeah. the confidence and not confidence. I can teach you how to sing in six months. I can't right. teach you how to brave while you sing. Maybe for another nine months, twelve months. We don't know how long it's going to take. Several years for you to get through all of it. Okay, so it's not just about singing, and it's not just about you are gifted. You also have to do the inner work. That is a piece of the puzzle as well. Some people, they may not realize that it's also you have to do the inner work to have the right type of mindset to be able to do things you all need to do. Let me ask you this. Coaching with you, what does that look like? Do you do Zoom? Is it in person? Do you travel? Great question. It's that I wanted to get the thought out. It was really interesting. It takes a... It takes like you said, inner work, outer work, it takes so much to really be worthy of receiving what God is trying to give you. You know what I mean? Yes, and I do. The, that is such a big piece. It's so hard to just say thank you. Have you ever said, given someone a gift? Oh, no, you shouldn't have. I have to give you something. That's not yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. The key is you say thank you. Receive yeah. I just want you to receive it. I don't yes. want anything in return because I was sincere when I gave this to you. Yes. You have to give me something because I give you something. It's okay to accept this from me. And people do not think God likes them. We get back to that. Yeah. People do not think he's kind, that he's generous, that he's funny, yeah. romantic. So they think that even the call like me to be a singer, to, to be a singer is there's it's tormenting. It's wicked. It's exposure. It's I'll be too vulnerable. They see it wrong. Right. That God, I made and I want everybody to see what I made and you're going to be super dope at this if you just ride your lane. So to answer your next question, there are a number of ways that we do it. There is, if you're here in Chicago, we have coaching that takes place on the second and fourth Saturday of every month live. And it's partnered with our it's a six month program for a six month coaching with me. And then it's partnered with also online coaching that deals with that fear piece. Right. So it's online and I'm also with you online. There's a course online. I'm with you also online. If you're in Chicago, you can also pair that with your live coaching for voice. That's just the voice piece. But then we go do that fear coaching and you we work all of the, the onions. We start peel, peeling it back. You have your homework. We talk together. I walk you through it. And then we culminate in an extraordinarily transformation. The artist retreat. Oh, wow. OK. Okay, tell us about that. Tell us about the artist retreat. Yeah, so within that six-month um, package, there's the artist retreat, the voice coaching, the fear coaching is all a part of it. And that artist retreat is, it's like, pull, first, if you ever want to change somebody, you got to pull them out of their environment. True. That's very true. That's true. And go put you somewhere gorgeous and fabulous and luxurious. And we make sure that you first get familiar and used to peace. This is what it feels like start to receive what we're going to start talking to you about and sharing with you the new you and all of the transformation happens in a very safe wonderful very acclimated luxurious environment where and it changes the environment changes also very tailored we go through a process right before where we are doing obviously with soul work that's going to there are often tears that are sewn. Um, That's the fastest way to heal. You gotta go ahead and try it out, right? Um, and you leave literally glowing. Oh I wow. Favorite part of but I have two days with people and in 48 hours they leave like a Okay, your sound is cut now. Uh oh. Okay, you can hear me. So you said training is two days, 40. So the retreat is two days. The retreat is typically two days back to back or away in, a, in a, a beautiful resort or it depends on where we're having it at. Okay. Um, and all of your amenities are taken care of. All of your food's taken care of. All of your lodging is taken care of. We completely take care of you. And then we do some real deep work for 48 hours. And oh. you're, but it was really interesting, I think, which is so fascinating. And you think that if we understood this, we would do more of it. I know I do. Is just you being around other people who want the same transformation I agree 100%. that takes place that you're all pushing towards and you're not resisting your uncle or your auntie or your roommate or your husband or your best friend who got a little bit of hair in them or a lot of bit of hair. Like just that alone I agree 100%. catapults you to the next level. So you really have to be intentional with your environment and decide if I'm going to have it, I got to do it with a new group. 
I agree. Okay, let me ask you this. So you said that your coaching sessions, there are six months. So is that just the first series of it? And then you have a second series, maybe a second six months, or do you have different stages of coaching? Because the first six months probably would be, would, would be more of like the introduction and then let's just figure out what's going on. And then do you have something after that in, in case ladies, they would want to come back or they come see you periodically oh, yeah. because we never stop learning and there's always issues arise within life to where we could feel like we still may need some coaching. So do you provide that as well? Very good question. My students are usually with me for years. Okay. 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 And, I, and yes, you start with the basics. You obviously start with like, how do I breathe? You start with placement. These are like basics when it comes to just the competency. How do I sing high? I call them the hell notes. High, electric, loud, and long. Those are the intimidating notes. Those notes, you got to get trained on those. Everything else is going to just be enjoy yourself and get confident because it's easy for your range. So those four notes, we start to work through the basics and that happens in the six months. And you literally, you, I have never seen anyone master it faster than me. And I mastered breathing not placement in nine months oh wow okay what about ages what about the ages of women what is the youngest you will coach yeah I, okay so what's the age ranges my youngest was 12 she became signed i, I like 14 because the voice starts to change they become more clear with their language they can start sharing with you how they really feel right young can too but they still they're still trying to figure out a lot of interesting things. So I seem to really be able to pull well from that teen, 13, 14, all the way up to we do past the 60s, right? And they come younger, so they usually have less less trauma and less negative experiences that have told them why they can't be who they feel they want to be. Okay, um, okay. Start that young, but we go as, as high as you want to go. So do you, is this coaching for women and men or is it just for women? It, it, thank you. Okay. It, <laughs> You know, they don't want to learn from a woman sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely, we have had some fantastic men come through here. Some of my favorite. But I tell you, the way they approach the stage is so funny. The way we approach it and the way they approach it is different. so interesting. It is. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, they are very interesting. I must say, I love the, the change of pace. But yeah, it's open to anyone. Okay. So can you tell the ladies how to find you on your social platforms? Yeah, sure. So a man okay. is with an X. M-U-X-I-C. That's at Amanda, A-M-A-N-D-A, -A music, M-U-X-I-C. And you'll see that at TikTok, Instagram, follow our YouTube page. We're at 27,000 subscribers, so we'd love for you to join oh, our Oh, wow, that's amazing. Okay. A lot of fun. And then for those of you who are like, I'm really trying to stalk you. Like, I'm trying to go deep, lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check that candy stuff you're putting on social media. Then you yeah. can visit me at amandaiz.com. That's mm -hmm. amazing com. You can definitely learn about the retreat at bravevoiceacademy.com. Again, bravevoiceacademy.com. And if some of you are like, I'm ready for my consultation because we definitely offer a 15 minute free complimentary consultation over the phone. And I will immediately know who you are, what the issue is, what we got to work on. Literally just talking to you 15 minutes on the phone. If you're ready for that, because you're like, I, I'm ready to go, coach, you give me a call. I'm at 312 857 4076. Again, 312 857 4076. I said it's six. Okay, so last thing. <clears throat> Is there a message if you could look back to your younger self and then if you could talk to yourself about the things you would have to go through life, then what would you say to yourself? Okay, you said the things you have to go through. There are some mm -hmm. things that you're right. There's some things it's just a part of the journey. You have to go through it, yeah. Part of the journey. There are other things that you should have never been there. <laughs> Yeah. How did I? How did I get here? Like how did I, I get here? Yeah. Right? And the, the the trick is to learn how to allow yourself to actually have the wisdom you do have. Like you have wisdom. You have you've picked it up subconsciously. You've picked it up by paying attention. You've read it. You've heard it. You've watched other people destroy their lives. You have it. That's right. What That's is right. required is for you to actually slow down because everybody's moving way too fast. That's true. Oh, down. Ask the Lord. Like some of y'all are new to that. Ask him, is he real? Who is he? You got to do the work there. If he's a, the, the bad bully cop, then you don't want to talk to that one for sure. But if you go to the Bible and you see this loving God who is trying to help you, ask him for wisdom that you probably have. True. But you just aren't confident. You're sure. Am I seeing this right? You are. She don't like you. Even if she's your mama. You're right. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. That person is not your friend. You're right. This job discernment. Is discernment. Yes. Let yourself actually know and see and be what you know and see and are. And I'm telling you, you will move so much faster. So scripture, is there a scripture you want to end this way to encourage the ladies? I will tell you, but you're going to be like, no, that's just dang on petty. I don't know. Let me hear. What is it? Let me, what is it? Yeah, I have been really just enjoying the Lord in so many ways. There's so many, but the one that I always lean back to recently is trust in the Lord with all of your heart. With all your heart, not some, but all. You just break it down. I, I For years, 35 years, I just didn't trust him. I was going to church and I did not trust him. Wow. First work through that. Trust him with all of your heart. Not in this. All of your heart, ladies. Not some and not just a little bit. Not how? All of your heart. That's everything, ladies. Trust you with my mom. Okay, help me get a husband, Lord, but don't touch my money. You know, I want all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I am National Iron Society, magna cum laude, straight A student. He's like, you don't know nothing. The stuff that the person I am now is not even remotely close to who I was when I was an intellectual. Mm -hmm. I'm super passionate, very more, way more intuitive and feeling based, way more connected, like so past the five senses, way in the six. Yeah. Lean not to your own understanding in yeah. all of your ways. Right. No, all. Oh. All of you would acknowledge him. I remember when I started getting loose with my tongue and I was like, it's no big deal. And God was like, stop talking like that. You look like them. You don't look like me. No, everything you say matters. I said that earlier. There's no such thing as everything you speak out into the world, everything you speak, those things, they are going to come back to you because that's what you put out there. Doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Negative talk, gossip, being petty, yes. um, being disrespectful, all of it, all of that is going to return to you. That's why the power of the, the power of life and death lies in your tongue. That's in the Bible, that is scriptures, ladies. Everything you say matters. There's no such thing as I just said this. I didn't mean it yet, but you said it. Once you say stuff, you can't take it back and bring it back and put it in here. Even when you talk to people, like it takes a lot for me to get upset. But if I get upset, I don't have conversations. I have to wait until I calm down, right? <laughs> because I know that when I say something because I'm angry because emotions. I cannot take that back. Like it's already out there. I can apologize a thousand times, but I've said it, right? Yep. So thank you again. Again, I am Queen, I am Demero Virgil, Queen Dump Conversations Podcast. And you ladies, I just want you all to be blessed. Again, this is Amanda Petaway. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. Love you. Love you too.